If you're new to quilting, you might fear the unknown, the unknown of quilting, thinking, how should I put all the layers together? Your goal is for a stress-free process, but, oh, where do you begin? Today's guest has a solution. You use an embroidery machine and turn it into a quilting machine. Denise Abel is a colleague on the Sewing with Nancy team, and she's here to join us with great ways of putting three layers of fabric together. Denise, you're going to enlighten us with ideas. Thank you, Nancy. In the first episode, we taught how to piece quilt blocks in an embroidery hoop. Now it's time to use the same ma machine for a quilting process. All the quilt layers are placed in the hoop, then the computerized machine takes over. It couldn't be simpler. Stress-free quilting with machine embroidery. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by... Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During the first episode, Denise and I showed you several different quilt piece in the hoop patterns. And De Denise, this is the, a very simplified Amish shadow or shadow block. And we made these right in the hoop, right on stitched on stabilizer. And if you miss that, you can watch on DVD or go online at nancyzeman.com and watch the first episode of the series and find out all the details. And you can see that four of these blocks were sewn together to create this interesting on point design. Do you have a little lap quilt here, Denise, that has been quilted? All three layers have been put together. That's right. And the quilting is done all with the embroidery machine. And it's important to look for embroidery designs that are designed for quilting. Right. What we need to look for is a quilting design that is triple straight stitched or bean stitched, mm -hmm. what they call in the embroidery industry. And they, this is a quarters, excuse me, half square triangle design. And then there's also in this colorful section, it's also a very big design. It's stitched in white, so it's maybe not so evident. Let's put up the, uh, the design so you can see what it looks like. So let me get it on point, but that's the way it is. It's a quilting outline design, compatible and great to put together. But we're going to put aside this top layer or this, this lap quilt and show you how to layer the the three layers, the top, the batting, and the backing together. We're not going to use safety pins. Right. That would cause a little issue with the embroidery machine. Yeah, we want to go with a little be. bit flatter um, construction. So we have the top layer that has been seamed, the batting, and the backing. And the batting and backing are already sticking together. And Denise, show how you suggest to base together in an unconventional way. Well, it's very easy to base the three layers together using an adhesive spray that you lightly spray the batting, always the batting, and then you simply smooth on your top layer. And of course, you would do that with the backing onto the batting as well. So you get it somewhat basted. Another option, if you didn't want to use adhesive spray, is to use paperback fusible web that comes in strips. And we have another one of the processes that we, we are working on. and. We have, we're working with half inch wide tape and your iron. And I'll go up here about a, oh, four or five inches apart. You just press and tear, press and tear. And then you remove the paper. And down below in this lower section, we've already moved the, removed the paper on some of these designs. Now, truth be told, removing the paper is the hardest part. You just get it started and remove it. And then you have, I don't know if you can see them, but they're little shiny areas of the fusible web that's left. Then you sandwich the layers together. You do the same on the top fabric and press, and it would be basted. Right. The adhesive on the tape secures all the layers together. Now, before doing the quilting, we suggest one 
other stitch and that's at the regular sewing machine and here you can see that I'm stitching in the ditch, stitching in the well and the seam just around the block. So you don't have to stitch a lot but it helps to stabilize. Exactly. It is stabiliz stabilizing all three layers together so there's no slippage when you're actually hooping mm -hmm. the quilt together. So now we're ready to hoop this fabric. Um, just make believe this was stitched in the ditch. <laughs> we have to do that sometimes, some virtual sewing. And we're going to use a larger hoop if you have that on your sewing machine or your embroidery unit. And with that, some double-sided tape. We have the double-sided tape, and as you can see, we have our normal hoops here. Mm -hmm. We have our outer hoop and our inner hoop. What we want to do is we want to take the inner hoop, flip it over, take the double-sided tape, run it right along the edges here, and then we take it and remove the tape. We have that end started, and I've added it to the other three sides, removing the tape. And alignment is pretty easy. Especially with this design, we have our quadrants and our alignment to match up with our alignment marks right on our hoop. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy if you align the seams. Exactly. We'll show you a little bit later if you didn't have this alignment ability, but this works great on many pieced quilt blocks. So now that hoop's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you have all your layers secured. We then take our outer hoop, place it underneath. And since that's not going to shift, you have that tape behind there. It's going to pop right in place, and it's not going to shift at all. So we have this aligned and ready to go, and we can now start doing the embroidering. When writing the script for this segment of the program, I called it Quilting with Embroidery 101, just the basics. And I think the basics that you need to understand are grasp is that even though this is an embroidery unit we're not using a stabilizer in the hoop which is often the case when embroidering but rather we have the three layers of fabric. The thread is not a rayon thread but a poly th polyester thread that's recommended for embroidery both in the needle and in the bobbin area. And then your designs and Denise will show those to you on her screen in just a few minutes but we're using two designs during this segment or the rest of this program, this full design that will go into the square and then the half square triangle areas will have this design. They're compatible. That's something to look for in the embroidery designs. And you'll find these in the book that accompanies the program today if you're so interested. But now, Denise, you're ready to put this hoop into the embroidery unit and you have a lot of fabric. Yes, we are ready to quilt. We have our quilt sandwich put into the hoop and we're ready to place it right on the embroidery machine. You just simply guide it right underneath the embroidery foot and place it right into the embroidery unit. Now because these layers have been basted together and then stitched in the ditch, you don't have to worry about them coming apart, and, but you just don't want to make sure it's not causing a, dra a drag on the embroidery. Absolutely, you can prop it right up so that mm -hmm. it doesn't put pressure onto the sure. embroidery unit. And now the embroidery design is on your screen. We have the embroidery design loaded right into the embroidery machine. And we're going to do a trace trial feature just to see where it lands on our block. And that just gives us a little tracing of our outermost areas. It just so you can see if you got the right size. <laughs> and this is our it's going to eight be inch design, but we have three other sizes that we could have selected as well. And now the magic happens. And we are quilting. Now, if you've ever tried to free motion quilt or hand quilt, you don't just sit there. And that's the, that's the beauty of this. And watch that needle, it's going back and forth, back and forth, three times in each, each stitch so that it'll be very secure. Very secure, this is our, the bean stitch. It goes on, it stitches onto itself three times before it moves on to the next stitch. So as we mentioned, we have variegated thread. You certainly could use other thread types. It could be all purpose thread, could be an option, but again, you'd use the same in the, in the needle as well as in, in the bobbin area. And 
watch how this is centered. How long does this take to stitch, Denise? This takes about three minutes. Okay, and so the machine does all the work. Now, sometimes with embroidery, I say you can walk away from the machine and do other things, but because we have this fabric here, you, you really aren't guiding the fabric. Maybe you're holding it or propping it so that it doesn't get in the way. You can definitely prop it up. And we're, we're just going to let this stitch. And as this is guy, stitching, it's, it's going right into the groove of the seams. So you maybe just didn't see that part, but wow, it lines up perfectly because you were able to center the hoop. Right on our stitching line, so we had a perfect guide with our piecing, our blocks, to give us that hooping area. And, and these are precisely digitized designs. So they'll stitch the same every single time. Oh, good. Now, there it's going down, just the line. Oh, I like it when it does that. So, what other types of feather designs you like to work with in quilt designs or scrolls? Yes, there are numerous different types of embroidery designs that are that replicate quilting. Mm -hmm. And rather than having to do it freehand uh, quilting or by hand, the embroidery machine does it all. Uh, you get the fun part of selecting the design, picking the area of where it goes, and pushing the start button. <laughs> So there's more preparation than there is in the actual stitching part. A little contrary to working with traditional quilting where you just put it in the hoop and then you either hand stitch or you free motion stitch at the machine. So we're almost done. Usually, you know, we don't have time to show in a complete embroidery design on television, but because this is very quick, I thought we, you should see the whole thing and watch the magic happen. Typical embroidery designs have a lot of stitching in it to fill in your area, but here we want our fabric to shine as well. This is our pieced block from the embroidery machine. So it's very easy to just sit back and watch it add the decorative stitching or quilting. And, and if you would choose a traditional machine embroidery design that has a lot of fill stitches and satin stitches, it wouldn't be compatible with the three layers of fabric. So that's why we stress the importance of the running stitches that we have. And Denise, I think you're almost there. You're almost done. So I'll let you show the viewers when you pop it out of the machine, or take it out of the machine, you can see the designs and it has been quilted. So a nice weight of fabric or nice weight, I should say, of all the layers put together and stitched. And on this sample, Denise has stitched it in white. And then we're going to go through and show you how to stitch very close to an edge of fabric in Quilting with the Embroidery Machine 102. Now for stress-free quilting with machine embroidery 102, and that is working with templates. Denise and I have two methods to share with you, and I've cut out the template for the half square triangle that's going to be stitched in this section of the quilt block, and I'd place it on the top of the fabric just the way I'd like it to stitch, and then just tape it down. We're not gonna sew through this, but it's just for positioning right now. I have the sticky, double-sided basting tape on the underside of the hoop, but as I place this on here, you can see the lines do not extend to the markings to get it exactly lined up. So use a marking pen and mark the vertical line uh, following the line, cross, heart, cross hatch line on the uh, template and then the horizontal line and extend those lines out. Make sure you're using a washable marking pen Place the inner hoop along those markings, get them positioned, it sticks down. I've loosened the hoop, the lower hoop, so that I can sink, I think, I can sink it in here, here we go. It works a little bit better on a flat surface, you sink it down, and then it should be lined up exactly when it's time to do the stitching. But if you have a camera feature on your embroidery machine, which is common on some of the machines, Denise is going to show you another option. We start much the same way. We have our template. We've trimmed this one a little bit further down. We position it where we want to stitch the quilting design. Place a little tape right to make sure that the design stays in place. We then take the positioning sticker 
position that right at the center of the design, right on the lines. Make sure to take time to align that right on the template. We then take our outer hoop, and since we have the sticky right on that, we eyeball. And you don't have to get this exact because you're going to see the magic that's going to happen in the machine. Then we take our outer hoop, position that, sink it right in. You really have to loosen that outer hoop quite a bit to get all these layers, and then you could tighten it if you needed it. So here we have this little sticker that's going to stay there for a little bit, and uh, Denise is going to show you how to align it. On my particular hoop, because I now have it hooped into place, I would remove the template, and I'd be ready to do the stitching just the way Denise did earlier. But she, Denise is going to share with you how to put it in the machine and use the camera feature, if you have that, at your machine embroidery unit at home, which is now a quilting machine. Denise is ready to show you how the design now can be come exactly in the hoop because of the positioning sticker, and this is an amazing feature. Oh, it's a very fun feature. It takes all the hard work about positioning mm -hmm. your design right, right in the machine itself. First, you'll notice that in the hoop, we have our quilt, and we've also added an additional batting on here. You'll see that if we didn't add that additional leader on there, we wouldn't have a secure hooping because there would be air in this area. So it's just an extra piece of the same batting that you've used so that you have kind of the same tension throughout the, throughout the hooping, and you can remove that, take out the zigzag stitch later on. Then we'll show the positioning. Right here on the screen, you'll see we have our design loaded. And we then select our find feature, our scan feature. We'll scan our area. And the machine is going to locate that positioning sticker. And as it does that, it's calculating. If we're off a few degrees in hooping, it's automatically going to rotate the design to fit that. So it's recognizing and determining that. And if we close this screen, you'll see our design has changed dramatically <laughs> to work with our placement. So now it prompts you, you've got to remove the template so that you're not um, going to stitch the paper down. We really don't need that. And you're ready to go. And we have our embroidery thread ready to go. And it's starting to stitch. And this only takes one minute to quilt the quilt. While the machine is doing the work, I'll just show you some other types of quilting designs that are appropriate for layering, or I should say stitching all three layers together. Uh, we have a floral design, and I really like to choose embroideries, quilting embroideries that are variegated or uh, have a variety of sizes, so that you're not always restricted just to one particular embellishment to stitch all layers together. And it's simple design, but elegant. We have our next little quilt is, uh, I like to call it tummy time for babies to lie on the floor. We have some flannel fabric. And within the block, there's a square design with leaves, leaves and then a compatible embroidery design to stitch in the border area. So a larger design and flowing. So regardless of uh, what you're working with, make sure that you have maybe two designs at the minimum, maybe three at the maximum to integrate together into the designs so that it's not always the same thing. And this works out particularly well, Denise, with that half square triangle just to let the machine do the stitching. And it does it exactly as every single time. It's precisely digitized, so there's no work on your part. So during this two-part series on stress-free quilting, we have pieced in the hoop. We have pieced the blocks on a stabilizer, made them all identically the same size because the machine did the stitching, then layering the fabrics, hooping them, showing you three ways to hoop so that you can stitch the layers together, again, using that machine. Denise, I thank you for sharing all these ideas with us, and I hope that when you, if you have a machine embroidery unit at home, it'll be a quilting unit now.
We take it for granted that when we need fabric, we go to our favorite fabric store or order online. That wasn't the case in the 1930s and 40s when feed sacks were a common source of fabric. My Nancy's Corner guest has made it her quest to collect and tell the fascinating stories of feed sack fabrics. I'd like you to welcome Chris Modell. Chris is a collector of these fabrics and has stories from the sacks. Welcome back to Sewing with Nancy, Chris. Thank you very much. You started collecting feed sacks to make quilts. I did. I was a quilter. And um, about 20 years ago, uh, reproduction fabrics from mm -hmm. the 1930s were popular. And that led to the feed sacks, which were popular at that time. So that's how I started collecting. What a beautiful quilt you made. Thank you very much. Um, I used some of the novelty and conversation prints that are very popular. And I just used a simple design to show off the fabrics. So the source of fabrics that you use and that tell the stories from the sacks start with this flower sack. From. Well, this is an interesting sack. It's from the um, Hillbilly Flower Mills in Texas. And its owner, W. Lee O'Daniel, uh, ran for governor in 1938. And mm -hmm. he thought, well, if he didn't become governor, he would sell a lot of flour. <laughs> So he uh, was used to promoting his flower on the radio. So he took his Hillbilly Boys band on the road and campaigned. The flower nut pork barrels were passed around by his children to collect donations. He did win the governorship ah. and yeah. actually went on to become a senator from Texas. Pr a precious print, a lot of interesting it is. stories. And, and we can date this one because of the 1938 uh -huh. campaign. So it's history in flower sacks, interesting. Right. Another interesting uh, print is from the um, Percy Kent Bag Company, and they've called it Kent's Cloth of the United Nations. And it has some of the battles from World War II, mm -hmm. some of the early UN nations. And uh, we do know that it's after Pearl Harbor but before D-Day because there's no okay. um, depiction of D-Day sure. on here. My favorite happens to be the bad eggs in the frying pan, um, <laughs> Hitler, Mussolini, and Emperor Hirohito. <laughs> so, uh, and you know, patriotism was, was very, very um, important in World War II. Um, and this particular sack has the Morse code for victory. Oh, So it interesting. has the V's and then the the dots and dash for victory. How fascinating. Isn't that, isn't that it fun? It is, it is. Right, and it's also in the patriotic colors of red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. um, Walt Disney was um, a great promoter, of course, and he was putting his license on toys and way things back for, then. way back then for children. So the one of the bag companies got the exclusive license to do the Disney designs on their feed sacks. Um, I've turned this one around, but it has Walt Disney's Cinderella, Walt Disney Productions on it, and also Alice in Wonderland. You know, we think of licensing as something that's kind of a new thing, but uh, right. relatively, but it isn't. No. It's way back to feed sacks. It's sex. not. And then we have... The um, fabric is soft, you know. The fabric is, really. and this was what, uh, they promoted it as being a finer per kale than uh, previous feed sack fabrics. Um, so they Disney could be flower sack or feed sacks? Probably flower sacks. Sure. The feed sack term is kind of encompasses flower okay. sacks, sugar sacks. About and how much yardage is in a feed sack? About a yard and a quarter. Okay. They're 36 inches wide and yeah. generally 40 to 45 inches long. Okay, so a good, a so, good amount of yardage. Right, right. You have, uh, a, you have a little story there. I do have a little story. Um, this is the Biddy the Cat from the Bemis Bag Company. Her owner brought her to the bag factory to control the mice. <laughs> and she ended up becoming a symbol of okay. that company. And so she is on a lot of, of their bags. And I've got one here okay. with, with Biddy up in the corner. Oh, as a, And um, this is a bag that they designed uh, for quilters. So here's Biddy. And the Biddy blocks are already here. It's kind of hard here. to see, but there's a little Yeah, Biddy is, is um, sneaking out of the bag. And the owner thought that was great. It, it meant that he had nothing to hide by, ah. by letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> uh, one of the Bemis executives uh, thought saw his grandmother's grandmother's flower garden quilt oh, and sure. thought that would be a great design. Uh, put a label on and a booklet inside the sack 
explaining how to make well, a quilt top. Chris, what wonderful examples, what great stories. Thank you for sharing them. Thank you. And you're welcome. If you would like more information on Chris and her feed sacks, you can go to nancyzeman.com and click under Nancy's Corner. Also at nancyzeman.com, please watch 52 of the most recent Sewing with Nancy programs. Sign up for my blog or Facebook or social media. Thanks to Denise Abel for being my guest during this two-part series on stress-free machine quilting. Thanks you for joining me. Bye for now. Nancy and Denise Abel have written a fully illustrated book entitled Stress-Free Quilting with Machine Embroidery that includes all the instructions from this two-part series plus free embroidery designs. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2718. Order item number BK2718, Stress-Free Quilting with Machine Embroidery. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.